Hi, art seekers. We are here with a super special guest, someone whose work I've admired for a really long time, and it took me a while to track him down. We're here with Thrashbird. A few months ago, I saw one of your iconic stencils of the guy texting, and I thought, oh, crap, I shouldn't be doing that. I should not have seen that. I should have seen what was on the wall. <laughs> your use and your activation of the ground is so clever and really subversive and now I look to the ground because I'm looking for your work. I, I just love the idea because I go out with friends and everybody's like, look at this, just sitting around the table looking around like six people and they're all just sitting there on their phones. And this like in the days of Blackberry, before the iPhone. And I'm, and I'm going, man, this is, this is just, this is what it's going to ultimately be. We're all going to be doing this all the time. And it's going to only get worse and worse. As technology gets better, the phones get funner, they're more fun, they're, it's just going to get worse. Um, and, and it has. And so I started doing that on the ground because I thought, well, it's just so ironic and funny that here you are, you're not looking around, you're looking at the ground, and then you come across this thing, this uh, little guy that's like, all, you know, hunched over on his phone, staring back up at you. And I just thought it was the perfect place for it. It's just such an innocent but like clever, funny way of just poking fun with people a little bit, just going, hey, you know, like, and check it out. And and it's not really it, like the irony the irony of it's not lost to me because I spend a lot of time on my phone. He is so contorted and he has no care for his own body, but he's holding the phone so lovingly. Yeah, I know, but yeah, but so <laughs> delicately. No, oh, that's so funny. And it's true because I would see people at computers and coffee shops, and they're like this, and I just remember going, man, you have no idea, I mean, I wonder what the repercussions of this of this stuff is going to be, like, we're all going to be fucking hunchbacks in, like, 2025, there's just going to be a bunch of, like, hunchbacks roaming around. I wanted that to, I wanted that to be conveyed in, in the piece, so I over-exaggerated everything in it so that it was very apparent. I'm glad that it uh, translates. I actually got into a fight a couple weekends ago with someone who was trying to paint over one of the clones. Oh, really? Yeah, and I had done my research too. I said, you know, actually the ground is not an illegal space. If it's if you're a taxpayer, you're allowed to to use it. It was still painted over, but I told him. <laughs> oh, oh, that's cool. That's, that's cool that you It's true uh, though, right? Yeah. Is the ground not well, an illegal it's a gray area. Um, <laughs> I've... I've had encounters with the police, and usually when you're painting on the ground, they, I mean, they want you to know that it's not okay. I find it truly ridiculous that it could, painting on the sidewalk could say, if it's not a hate message, it could send someone to jail. It just seems asinine yeah, to me. If the entire ground was covered with graffiti, even if it was like the worst graffiti, I would still make me more happy than walking on a gray sidewalk because at least there's color. I always tell people that uh, like when they say, oh, it's graffiti, it's vandalism. They say, no, this whole fucking place is graffiti and vandalism. Like this whole place is shit. You know, it's not like, it's not, concrete and pavement are not nice. They're not inviting. You know, I don't get excited to go outside and walk on the sidewalk. I get excited to go walk on the beach in the sand. So don't sit there and tell me that, like, a pristine sidewalk is beautiful. It's like, it's not. Do you see differences between street art and graffiti? There's, there's a huge chasm between the two. And it's it's a shame because uh, I think that if the two worlds could kind of coexist cohesively, that we could get a lot of really cool stuff done. <laughs> and um, I think that... Um, well, to put it bluntly, for the most part, in most places that aren't Los Angeles, street art is done by, like, yuppie white kids, and graffiti is done by low-income ethnic kids, and that's the way that it is predominantly in L.A., but that's changing. Graffiti comes from, like, a, a sort of place of, like, representing your neighborhood and, uh, and getting your name up there. Street art comes a lot from either when people sort of graduated from that mindset, or they didn't come from that, but they, they like the idea, and like you said, the seduction of like going out and doing something subversive and, and, uh, and putting your mark out there. So you've incorporated text a lot in your work recently. How did that happen? And how do you see the text and the images intermingling? We don't think in words, we think in pictures. But words resonate more with people than pictures do nowadays. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because we're so inundated with imagery. And we don't get a lot, we don't read a lot, we, you know, we don't actually get a lot of words that all of a sudden, like, these super fucking generic, just mundane um, 
sayings that have been around forever are all of a sudden these profound statements that people are posting on Instagram like it's a fucking revelation and I'm just sitting there laughing. With, with that image, that with the clone, it's so great because I can just attach anything in a talk bubble and it just makes sense because mm -hmm. we use our phone in that way now where we just send stupid little clips to people all the time. We write little hashtags all the time that are supposed to be funny or whatever. So. And you can just write anything and attach it to that, and it works. The way that Instagram is treated now and the way that selfies are treated now, it's no longer about, like, hey, check, check out where I'm at. I'm at the Grand Canyon. Isn't this cool? It's like, it's like, oh, look how fucking rad I am. You know, look how rad my fucking life is. Like, I'm at some crappy Vegas pool, and I'm hanging out with a bunch of, like, pseudo-celebrities and shit. And to me, that's death. That is, like, the death of... Death, death by authenticity yeah. or something. Yeah, it's just the death of, like, of your soul. <laughs> that's kind of why I put the death myself beyond there. Well, and then I, I do the image of the dude, like, you know, doing the, my favorite, the, the selfie, which predominantly is on my girls, the, the, this one, you know? Not always. Well, okay, so we're, we like this because of the angle, but then dudes <laughs> like to take off their shirt and take a selfie <laughs> in the bathroom. Yeah, the selfie in the bathroom, 